Hello and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a, a Valorant style VFX. Kind of. It's not like one to one comparison, but I think it looks pretty nice. Hey, if you want to support the channel, if you love Shoot 'em Up, and also if you are an Android user, you might want to check out my game. It's on Play Store called Verge. Link down below. Download it, leave a review there. Let me know what's to improve maybe i'll keep it updated who knows you know but yeah enough for that hey let's just get back to the tutorial um all right let's just talk about it so this is inside the game i mean i'm gonna close it i guess and let's take a look at the smoke bomb scene itself and here we go well uh as you might see here it's actually layered so i think that's what make uh, valorant style vfx kind of look good because it has a lot of layers especially for their smoke bombs and in this case, I'm going to turn off the ground smoke for a moment. So even for the sphere, I only use three. Well, you might add more elements to it. But again, I think you need to mind the performance versus the visual kind of thing. But anyway, so it consists of three layers, like the sphere inside, where it's like solid. It doesn't really have any alpha. So it's acting like the, was it the cover when the player goes through the... How should I say, like the smoke bomb itself, and then the smoke inside, which is a rotating sphere, not a rotating sphere, but rotating UV with uh, alpha texture, and also this one. Well, the same as smoke inside, but this one, the texture has been scaled up, or scaled, yeah, scaled down, uh, to make it a little bit smaller, and it's pin a little bit faster than the inside. So it has this nice, like, uh, variety, you know, of spinning motion. So, yeah. Again, so the first uh, things that you need to consider is that you need to make it into layered VFX. So let's take a look at the UV scrolling shader. I'm going to focus on Lee on the uh, smoke outer here. Oops, where do I click? Here we go. All right. So this is a thing. So maybe let's ignore this one on the top, but let's talk about the UV scrolling. I mean, if you already watched my video since the beginning, like the stylus explosion or particle effects, uh, was it enhancement or I forgot the, the name of the video, but it's basically the same. So you have the UV scaling first to scale the UV. So also we put the UV scale parameters so you can like, you know, adjust how stretched or how big is the texture that you want here and I think too is work just fine for me and then there is the panning uh, UV panning and this one is to control the motion so I also assign the UV motion here and then multiplied by the time time is just a built-in variable an input variable or an input node here that control uh, that should update every time so it will like always add it over time and you can control this one uh, minus uh, 1.25 here you can make it slower like 0.5 or maybe like make it stop something like that so it doesn't really spin in the x axis but it's spin in the y axis so something like that or maybe you want to reverse the motion you know instead of going to the right you can go to the left or i mean instead of going counterclockwise you can go make it clockwise so but i think i like this one to go counterclockwise. I don't know why. It's just for me. And then the next one is alpha. So, oh, the texture first, I guess. So the main texture is this one. And again, I'm going to talk about texture later. But so, yeah, this is just a parameter for you to assign the texture. And it should have alpha. As you might see, there are actually two different texture here, like main texture and alpha texture. But it looks the same because it is. It is the same texture. You might ask, like, hey, why do you use... Uh, two different slot for the same texture. Why? Because take a look at the sphere inside here. So in the sphere inside uh, node here, I use different alpha texture. You know, I actually just use solid color because I want it to be solid. It doesn't really have transparency. So if I just use the main texture, then the black area will show that or it will make the sphere transparent and I don't want that. So I think it's better for you to have two different parameters for the main texture and also the alpha to have a better control on how you want it to look. So yes. 
So that's smoke inside and smoke outer. Again, I think the smoke inside is just the same uh, also, but the UV motion is a little bit uh, slowed down and also the scale is also, uh, what is it, dropped down. And yeah. Next up, because uh, Valorant stylized or Valorant, Valorant style VFX, they don't really use the global lighting. So they actually unshaded. So to do that, you can actually go here and then or check the unshaded option or unshaded flags here. And it will make the, uh, what did the shading, it's look more flat instead of like using the, um, the global lighting. I think it's for gameplay reason because when you use the uh, global lighting, it will be a little bit difficult to control, you know, so you need to adjust the global lighting, but then the VFX need to be dynamic, and then, yeah, it's just um, a mess, you know, if you try to control one or the other. So maybe that's why they keep it unshaded. And to actually fake the shading, I actually use gradient overlay. So again, I'm using a UV scaling here and then gradient assign a variable gradient called gradient scale. And then also I have the texture 2D parameters. So if we turn it off for a moment and focus on this one. So this one is actually kind of make like the uh, fake shadow. And I love it when maybe it's not I love it, but I think it's much clearer when the shadow is coming from the top or the lighting coming from the top and cast a shadow to the bottom area, right? So that's what happened. And in this case, I use the color operation overlay. I think you can just use whatever, maybe like multiply or whatnot. Uh, but I think it looks pretty good. So you can also like, and also this is the place for me to, uh, how should I say, like control the color. So you have that, you have this fake shading to, instead of using the global lighting shadow, right? The next one, of course, is to add the ground smoke. However, I think the ground smoke, it depends on the position of the uh, smoke bomb. If it is like on the wall, then the ground smoke should not be there. So it needs extra programming for that. I'm not going to, going to cover that at the moment, but it looks a little bit weird uh, looking at it in isolation or maybe not in a context, I mean, in a scene. So this one, it's how it looks in a scene. So it's actually gluing, like gluing? I don't know if that even a word, like glue the VFX to the ground. Uh, now it looks a little bit jarring, right? It's just end like that. There's no smoothness to it. It doesn't really feel like it belongs there. So when you add this ground smoke, it's actually make everything look at least better in my opinion. And uh, of course, just like the main sphere, the ground smoke also had this, um, what is it? Layered thingy. So the first one is like the smooth one. So you would take a look at the texture here. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, okay. Uh, where is the, ah, there you go. So this one is not the smooth one. Ah, here we go. So this one is the smooth one. So it has like smooth edges, but this one has hard edges. So I think that's what make a kind of Valorant style VFX uh, work because they combine like smooth and also uh, what is it hard edges at the same time and yeah uh, so again I think you need to be mindful of using the layers thingy and also the sorting uh, what is it rendering thingy right so adjust that okay and as you might notice also this one is actually not a mesh it's actually a particle system so the particle is actually pretty simple. So it's just a, a particle with, uh, what is it? What is this called? Like a quad mesh as they are drawing past and using a basic material, using the texture here and then added transparency, set it to alpha and then call mode to disable. And also for vertex color and use us albedo, you need to check that uh, thing. Because if you don't check it, it will use this color instead of the particle color, right? So, right. And I guess that's it. Right. Well, maybe let's talk about the texture work for a moment. All right. So this is inside a uh, Photoshop. I 
painted with my mouse, which is, I don't know, it's a miracle. Uh, yeah, what makes a good Valorant uh, texture? I think it's that it has like this painted shadow and it also has the motion built in with uh, in the texture or built in or painted onto the texture itself. So it has that motion and yeah, it's actually the layer is actually not that complicated. So you just add blurs, you add motion blurs, and then you clip the shading to the base, uh, what is it, the base shape, so on and so forth. Again, I think it's good for you to combine both hard edges and smooth edges at the same time, because that's what make, uh, what is it, the style kind of like blend together or looks good. And it also goes the same for the other texture. It's just like, basically, again, it's so easy to paint. And then uh, I painted this one is the smooth one. And this one is the hard edges just to give that, uh, what is it like? Not shock wave. I don't know what to, to describe that. But yeah, something that emitting from the center to the outside and then it's just gone. So that's basically the things that you need to pay attention to when you're making a stylized VFX, especially if you want to mimic the Valorant style. And so, yeah, I don't know. What do you guys think about it? Uh, let me know in the comment down below. What do you want to see next? And, you know, my condolences for fellow developers that are use or that who is using Unity at the moment. You know, it's so bad. You know, come to Godot, guys. Come on. Godot is looking great. It is capable. Well, maybe you're going to miss some feature from Unity, but Godot is really, really capable. So, yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe for more Godot game engine related video and tutorials. And if you want to support the channel, go ahead, uh, support, go to coffee uh, slash let striker ID and get the project file as well. It's cheap, guys. You know, you can go there. And also, uh, yeah, I guess that's it. I don't know what else to talk about. Again, thank you so much. Hope you guys have a great, nice day. My name is Arifido Hangara. Signing out. See you next time. And bye.